So I was doing the math and it has been over a month since I have been in this beautiful aircraft and that's just way too long. Let's do some uh, GA flying up Boston way. Straight to the chase here, boys and girls. We are uh, participating in the BVA Seacoast Fly-In. The Boston Virtual folks uh, do a great job. They put on a bunch of these midweek events. And today we are um, we're going to try to take advantage. So the two featured airports actually are Portland, Maine, and uh, Bangor. And so it's uh, we're not going to just go back and forth there. I think it's only, oh, heck, I don't know. Uh, 70, 80 miles or something like that. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna fly with uh, we're gonna add a couple of airstrips that have some kind of uh, I don't know some some personal appeal. And one of them is Plum Island, the site of many a failed and then sometimes not failed uh, flights. It's uh, just here up here north of Boston Logan International. In case you're wondering where we're at. Uh, we're going to file a VFR flight right up the coast into Portland. We'll make a full stop there, kind of gather ourselves, and then we're going to do something that it may not be the smartest in the world. We're going to try to get out there to the Heron's Nest, and um, the Heron's Nest is is a really unique and interesting um, little little dirt strip there, carved out of the middle of an island. It's a fictitious um, airstrip, but it's fun nonetheless. And I've never tried to land the the duke out there i don't even know if i can land the duke out there um, i've landed the duke at locker airfield in italy and it's similar to that so i'm hoping that we can uh we can finagle a way to get it down on the on the ground there at the heron's nest um if it doesn't feel quite right or we we sense otherwise or the weather tells us differently whatever we will turn and head to our final destination which is bangor um, and so that's that's the idea anyway and here's what's going on by the way if you're wondering uh, where can I fly tonight well I think you're in pretty good shape if you're here kind of in the northeastern part of the United States or the east coast of Canada look at all that coverage out here even Atlanta popping uh, up there and and Orlando Miami area um, so come out come out to the east coast we'll have a good time come out to the coast we'll have a good time uh, but uh, yeah uh, I digress. Boston's lit up as you would expect. There's Portland. They already have 22 people coming in. That's awesome. And uh, Bangor, no love for Bangor, Maine. Wow. Well, anyway, it'll pick up. It'll definitely pick up. And, um, yeah, you can even do a little bit of uh, Canadian Canadian roots if you'd like. There's all kinds of coverage up here. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, some stuff going on down here. Uh, about down by San Juan, Puerto Rico. Over here, Mexico and Salt Lake Center um, is online. I was wondering also, I do know that they have a an event. I don't know if it's tonight. Uh, boy, they have an event coming up for a new a new um, virtual club that's based off of Era Alaska. And I thought it might have been tonight. Maybe not. Anyway, a little bit of stuff going on down there, South America. And as is typical, not a whole lot. Europe, Asia, a little bit down in Australia, and uh, again up here, Singapore. Um, so yeah, so plenty of options, but I think I think the hot spot, as you can see, is is right up here. So hope you're out there somewhere in the VAT sim world and having a lot of fun, regardless. And let's get started. Let's see if I remember how to start this thing. Um, 
parking brake. We're going to set that. We're going to check the... Oh, I already checked the flight control, so I've been flying a little bit here. Yeah, I better check them just to make sure. This thing is one of the kind of precursors to A to A, if that's if that makes any sense as far as uh, modeling system failures and things like that. And we actually got bit by one of those uh, the other day. Well, two times ago, I think. I was actually trying to fly up into here, and um, or maybe it was not Plum Island, it was Minuteman Field actually, and and uh, had an engine failure and ended up uh, down on the turf. So uh, anyway, I do want to I do want to make sure I'm checking everything before I just say yeah we're good. So engine levers, uh, excuse me, condition lever is uh, cut off. We're going to put the prop levers to high RPM, power lever idle. Making sure all the panel switches are off, which they are. Um, we do have panel lights on. We'll turn that off for now. I d the only thing I have, uh, I'm kind of cheating a little bit here, is I do have midday um, midday w uh, time. So we're going to have some uh, VFR in the in the daytime because Plum Island and Heron's Nest, both, neither one of those are, are obviously lit up. So we they're not a part of the equation if we don't. Um, battery can come on. Let's see. We'll put the beacon on. We will do a quick enunciator test here. That looks good. Hello, downwind sim. Yeah, we're just uh, flying up here Boston way. I know there's a lot going on tonight. I think Agent Bravo 7 has a stream, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if not already, but I think uh, our friend uh, Slant Alpha Adventure may also have a, have a stream going. So, Lots of viewing options tonight if uh, if you're not feeling like flying yourself. Um, da -ba -da -ba -da. Fuel selectors. Those are on. Those are it's default on. Yes, on, on. Fuel selectors. And, okay, here we go. Fuel pump number one can come on. Making good fuel pressure. We're going to turn the right ignition on. And go to the starter. We're going to watch this thing rise up past 12 and introduce the fuel. Gotta keep an eye on our gauges here. That's a very good start. And we will take it. That pump can come off, turn that gen on, and we'll put the ignition to auto. And we'll repeat the process here for pump in engine number two. Good fuel pressure, ignition on, starter engaged. Onward and upward, there's 12, and there's fuel. Watching those gauges. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. We even have a little bit of uh, navigation stuff rocking and rolling here. All right. Turn that pump off. Gen is on. Ignition to auto. Main inverter can come on. Master power can come on. And all of this stuff lights up fine and dandy it's probably going to look a lot like I was flying up here just a little while ago just to kind of knock the dust off but um, okay that looks good we do have a flight plan filed our flight our first leg of it is just up from Plum Island to Bangor and I think we need I better just double check here it looks like if I file 1500 we would be just fine so let's let's do that and we'll be a, right around, what, 160 to 180, I would think. And we're going to be off the ground here in the next five minutes, which is awesome. Okay, flight plan is filed. And we, let's see, Plum Island. I bet we need Boston approach for Plum Island, don't we? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Boston, Boston, Boston. Approach or departure. What do I have? Do I have either of those? Nope, it's 3300 right now, but I still think where we are located, that's going to be that's going to be the 
the initial check in here. So let's let's tune that in and let's get our get our initial clearance here. Let me get my notepad up here first. Oh, I don't have that pulled up right now. Okay, give me just a second. I thought I did. Flight plans, flight logs, and that's amazing how many flights I've already done in the year 2020. That's pretty cool, actually. So it's this is the 20th. And 626 November, that's us. And we are 6 Bravo 6, which is Plum Island. No. <laughs> 2 Bravo 2. Yeah, I'm barely picking him up. Maybe out of his range here. KPWM. Boston approach November 626 November. Who was I calling for Boston approach? I guess there's 626 November on the ground Plum Island. I didn't know if I needed to contact you to request a VFR departure. November 626 November. November 626 November. Hold that standby for me one second. Roger. Alright, yeah, November 626 November, you're outside my airspace, so if you have our departure, we'll be on unit convoy. Alright, thanks for the confirmation, 626 November. Okay. Alright, so 2280 then, we'll pop over to that. And we really don't need to talk to anybody until we get a little bit closer to Portland anyway, so that's okay. All right, then we will set 1500s already set. I'm going to look at the weather really quickly here. Active sky gives us 3025. I don't know how close. Oh, that's fairly close. 3025. And just cross-referencing our field elevation here right now. 10 foot. Yep. So, boom. We're pretty close. Pretty close. It's a good, uh, good cross check there for your altimeter. If you don't happen to have a necessarily an ATIS, you can always just set this to uh, to be whatever the field elevation is. And let's see. Keeping continuing with the flight checks here. All right. Uh, we are essentially. We're not really tracking any VORs or anything. We will, we will use one uh, Vortac to help us when we head uh, towards the Heron's Nest, just because it's so doggone hard to find. But we're going to be popping out of here on a basically a 040 heading. Again, we're using the coastline as kind of our main uh, reference point of reference there. So 040. We'll put that in, though. We'll, we'll probably use a little bit of autopilot just uh, so we can look around a little bit and kind of, you know, do that kind of stuff. But, all right. Um, the other thing that uh, Active Sky tells me here is, you know, it looks like our wind's down that away a little bit, so that means it's going to be a north departure. Is that confirmed? I know sometimes the... Uh, the wind socks don't always tell the same story as the wind. Two nine or six at five. So yeah, it's it's going to be a departure to the north. We are going to have to back taxi. There is no there is no taxiway here. So and let's just double check one last time here. Plum Island looks like we have runways. What do we have? What do we have? Runway. Oh, we have a. That's right. I forgot we have a turf runway here. 
Yeah, we're gonna take we're gonna take runway ten. Well, so that's not really a very now we're gonna have to take runway two eight. So I'm actually gonna So yeah, that windsock's not really telling us the whole story. Um, now it is. I'm going to head down to the left, turn around, and come back on 2.8. I don't even know if I could find the turf runway there. It's a little shorter. This one here, 2,300 foot. And uh, no, sorry, the turf one is a little longer. It's 2,300. The asphalt one's 2,150. Well, we're going to go ahead and take the asphalt run runway. Now Plum Island traffic, Duke, November 626, November. We'll be back taxiing runway 28 for VFR departure, Plum Island. All right. Kill the brakes. Let's get out of the muckety muck here. Did I cancel the brakes? Yep. Sometimes takes a little bit to get rolling when you're off to the side. There we go. Happy Monday, everybody. Glad to have you along. And if you stumble upon this later on, welcome to Prop Culture. All things propeller driven and the occasional vintage jetliner but mostly propeller driven and just exactly this type of, of flight it's just fun to get behind some of these GA aircraft and, um, and just go out and see what there is to see at some of these smaller airfields all right a little wobbly on the taxi here boys and girls let's get her turned around Nice orbic scenery, as you would expect from those guys. All right, let's we'll take every bit. We'll even take a little bit of threshold here. Okay, let's get everything else ready to go. We've got strobe on, nav on, taxi should have been on, landing lights going to come on. Um, I am going to put on some fuel vent and pedo heat. We have, let me see if there's any reports. No, no reports of icing right now, but uh, just a few lazy clouds that we're going to climb maybe through, and I just want to make sure on departure that we're okay. Uh, I do have, do I have, let's see here. No, nope, I don't have any flaps. Put a notch of flaps in here. Our trim is set uh for takeoff, we're looking at about, we want about 90 for rotation speed, 85 to 90. And then I think we're really in good shape. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. We're going to be making a, a departing right traffic here and heading 040 into, into Portland. And Plum Island traffic, 626 November. Taking runway 28, we'll be departing uh, right traffic, VFR up the coast, Plum Island. All right, here we go. Prop, condition levers, full forward. Here comes power. You can't over torque this thing, so you kind of have to be a little bit careful when you're first uh, spooling things up. There's our rotation speed. Positive rate, gear up. There's flap speed. And we'll start making our turn here. Pull the power back just a bit. Start the timer. Get on our 040 heading. Get up to 1500. And we'll just kind of enjoy flying up the coast here. There's our coastline. 
All right. And that's about where we need to be. Level out. It's about our 1500. A little bit through that, I guess. But uh, right now, a little bit more concerned with our speed, to be honest with you. This thing can overspeed in a hurry, so you kind of have to be mindful of that. And we're a little quick here. Not terrible, but continuing to climb because of all that extra power. So let's get it trimmed out here. We do need to bleed off a little bit of altitude. We're fairly light. Not a lot of fuel here. Boy, we are getting up there quick. And uh, not wanting to slow down. Okay. I am des descending just a little bit here, and that's part of why we continue to pick up airspeed. I'm just going to pull the throttle way back here. This thing is definitely uh, a sports car. I mean, it just really likes to run all kinds of fun to fly. I do know that they have a Duke in the uh, in the X-plane world. I don't know how how it compares to this, but this is uh, it's my favorite my favorite bird to fly. And Titanium Druid checking in there. Hello, sir. All right. I think we got her fairly well trimmed out. I'm just going to fly this thing by hand pretty much all night long tonight just because uh, why let the computer have all the fun, right? Okay, after take off, a check a list. Let's see where we're at. Okay, flaps are up, gears up. Power is set. We're still not quite trimmed out. All our pressures and temperatures are looking really, really good. That short climb out, really, uh, we didn't need a whole heck of a lot of anything. We're not going to worry about prop sync today since we're only at 1,500. And uh, keeping an eyeball on the oil temps as well just in case I do have anti-ice set but not really thinking I'm gonna need it so I'm gonna go ahead we'll keep the pitot heat on we're gonna turn the fuel vents off and all right I think that's gonna do what we need let's turn taxi and landing lights off for now let's make our bets right now as to if I will forget those when we're coming into Portland can almost, uh, you know, I can almost guarantee that I will. That's okay. Okay. So 40, what did I say? About a 56 mile, sorry. 56 mile initial leg here. And so, you know, at uh, 180 plus, <laughs> I had filed 180, but we've been consistently over that. Um, at 60 knots, you know, it's about that's about a mile a minute. At 120, that's about two miles a minute. 180 would be at about three miles a minute, right? So 60 divided by three, that should give us about 20 minutes. I know it's not an exact measurement; it's just an estimate because. 180 knots is way faster than 180 miles per hour, but all right, Titanium Druid got in there, got his hands dirty. Never thought taxi instructions could turn me into a mumbling idiot. Yeah, I'm I'm consistently, I have, I have the map before I do taxi, as you've seen, I have the map up, I rehearse where I think they're going to send us. And then I have either my scratch pad or I have on the second 
second screen I have something I'm typing into because you're right it's you would think taxiing would be the easy part but that's sometimes the trickiest but uh, good good deal you're gonna you're gonna go through that and just keep in mind you know the first 10,000 flights are your worst then you get a little bit better after that I'm still waiting on that to happen for me by the way all right 1500 and approximately 180 I still just kind of continue to tweak the power settings this plane right now is going come on man let's go let's go wind uh, is the X factor here and again when we took off the winds were uh, out of the west so there's a good chance we're getting sort of pushed out to sea here just a bit and if that's the case then we will maybe have to do a little bit of uh, finagling here to get back in what is Portland Does Portland have any kind of a ADF or you know it really doesn't but I guess we could if we had to we could use oh, good golly what's what BOR is near Portland I don't even know holy cow uh, Kennebunk all right so I could use Kennebunk 117 one okay I did have that in there at one point in time I'll get that guy alive and I'm losing altitude again unfortunately here ATC sent him all over the airport <laughs> oh yeah there's nothing nothing worse than feeling like you're lost on the taxiways and then you're ending up with all these you know, you're taxiing into these FBOs that you shouldn't belong in and all right so as I look at this I'm seeing roughly I think 062 according to uh, according to what I see here I could be wrong let me show you what I'm looking at here so I tuned in here's where we here's where we came from we're just sliding up the coast here here's where we're going to but there's as you can see lots of little airports dotting here and there and everywhere so we just tuned in Kinnebunk and we're and I'm seeing this little 062 D lead going kind of right towards it so um, I would I don't know how far that is but at least give us an idea if we're heading in the right direction Lanty is off into the muck. Yeah, I thought he was doing that Air Alaska thing, which looks pretty cool. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check that out. I just already had kind of had this in the works, and really hard for me to pass up Boston virtual stuff. Okay, so so that's basically when we when we get this lined up, we know we're we're on course and actually if we ever do get that lined up that what that probably means is we've slid way too far inland and we're approaching it from here which um, you know if you're lost it's good to have just some reference point anyway so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about getting too far inland as I was sneaking in but I don't want to I don't want to stay just right on that 040 and get myself pushed way out off course to the uh, to the east either yeah I'm guessing um, I'm guessing things although not necessarily things are better here in uh, the Northeast than they are up in Alaska I guess again not necessarily let's pull up uh, Pull up Slant Alpha's stream here real quick. We've got a second. This is the other thing is it's going to give us a little bit of a feel. So we're almost, we're inbound to Kinnebunk, so we're only 11 miles away. And then I'm thinking, you know, I'm just estimating. It looks like the Kinnebunk VOR is 
is a little bit more like about two-thirds of the way so you know again let's just do a little mental math if it's a 60 mile leg then that means we'll have covered about 40 miles when we get up near Kinnebunk and then that gives us roughly 20 to go until we're into uh, into Portland so I actually think what I'm going to do now is I am going to pick up Portland and I'm going to talk to those guys because they're going to want to know my intentions and I'm going to want to be able to tell them Portland approach 1975 I'm going to tune this in, listen to what's going on. I'm going to get... I don't know if I have... I don't have... Is there? Yes, there is a Portland Atis. That's handy. We'll look that up here. Care 29, proceed direct Baker. Information Victor. Direct Baker, Care 29. American 700, maintain 170, that's greater to a peak contact. Portland Tower, 120. Looks like they want uh, runway 29er. Yep, the winds... Right now, calm, which is nice, and 10 statue miles of visibility. Yeah, very nice day up here. Tower 1 Tower Delta, maintain 210 knots. Tower 1 Tower Delta, maintain 210 knots. Portland approach, November 626, November. Air 626, November, Portland approach. Closer, uh, approximately 30 miles to the south of the airfield. Um, inbound, we are requesting a full stop landing. 2033. 2033, 66th November. Alrighty. 2033. Three. Three. That's turned on. Squawk Charlie. Right, that's turned on. Yep. Yep. Uh, we'll turn right heading 090. Zero zero, zero, right, we're uh, good there. We'll vectors three sequence. Sorry about that. We are a little high coming three down three here. Cross, uh, oh boy, look at our speed. That's crazy how fast that is. Almost as bad as the 727, man. Expecting runway 29 or 626 November. All right, all right, all right. Let's get stabilized here, though, first, boys and girls. Okay, yeah, Portland approach, uh, one ticket out. This is going to be a pretty quick so let's sequence here. I don't see, think I'm too far off course. Going to be a uh, visual uh, one, Tango Delta, type of day here. Left heading, uh, zero, two, but zero, that now. means for us, we're probably going to have to enter one, in a uh, traffic pattern to come back around. I forgot to report my position also. Um, what do we got a left? What do we have here? Doesn't specify the traffic pattern on the. Doesn't specify the traffic pattern here to Portland, but we're going to be coming into runway. 28 or 26 what did I say 229 which is uh, landing to the sorry coming out here landing to the west so my guess is we'll probably enter left hand downwind and approach that way run, runway 29 -er. all right so we are by the way now moving away from the Kinnebunk VOR, so we should, you know, we were estimating about 20, 20 nautical miles, you know, it's a total estimation, but it'll get us in the in the neighborhood. The, the Portland, Maine area, by the way, is, we're looking at a pretty heavily populated area, so we'll look for the town, first of all, which I kind of think we see, this might be, and there's a pretty good outcropping here. Um, Portland is located. Yep, there we go. 
Enter left downwind runway 29 or 626 November. Yep, so we're getting close, guys. Just right, need to make to eye zero. contact <laughs> with the with the runway. Let's let's go ahead and spin this guy around too, just Three. so we have a little bit of a reference. All right, I do not see the airfield just yet. Downwind suggests getting the binos out. Yeah, I may have to. I have a little bit, I think, a little bit of time here still. I think I see a light up here that might be what I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and fly kind of uh, directly at the field. Getting our speed down. Maybe a little too slow. Let me get that back up. Around 120 would be perfect. Then I could top toss some flaps in and uh, life will be good. Yeah, this is definitely the town of Portland. If only I can see the airfield. Make sure it's not over here. Tower 626 November, contact Portland Tower 120.9. 120.9 or 626 November. Alright, uh, that that indicates I'm uh, getting closer. <laughs> uh, there, I see the I see the landing light out there. Portland Tower. Good evening, 626 November. Uh, inbound at uh, 1700. We're going to be making left traffic. Full stop. Runway 29er. Number uh, 6 November. No, uh, Christian November 626 November. Portland Tower. Good evening. Any chance you can make a uh, straight in approach for runway? A firm, 626 November. All right. November 626 November, Roger makes straight in approach runway 36. Straight in 36, 626 November. Okay, I think I see that just right in front of me. So let's get uh, flap set. We'll start slowing it down. Hey, Jeff Pilot Sundman checking in. Hello, sir. I agree with Downwind Sim. Very fun event. Even the outcome. Even though the outcome wasn't what I'd hoped for, but I still had a blast. All right, so I'm kind of, I think I need to just, this kind of is a down base wind uh, maneuver. <laughs> I'm sort of coming this way so I can enter a, like a, almost a 45 here to the, to the final. Yep, we're in pretty good shape here, I think. See red, I see white. There's the airfield. Good deal. Good deal. All right, let's start bringing the power back a little bit more. Portland Tower, one Tango Delta on two mile funnels, runway really clear. Uh, November one Tango Delta, A affirmative, wind calm, runway two nine, clear to land. Okay, second notch of flaps coming in. Gear coming down. Oops, gear coming down. <laughs> Pushing the wrong button. And we'll try to see if we can maintain about 90 on the approach. There's our runway. You can see we're still not quite there. All right, prop and condition levers full forward. Getting a little bit too fast. Now I'm a little too low according to the poppies. Right, 360, 66 November. All right, so we. 336, Portland Tower, runway 29, line up and wait. All right, so I'm going to pull the gear up while I do this, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the flaps up as well. Okay, right, 360. We are BFR, so we do need to be looking around, making sure that we don't run into anybody. Portland Tower, wind calm, runway 29, clear to land, traffic will depart prior to your arrival. Clear to land, runway All right, Jet Pilot Cinnamon talking about his virtual USA Flying Club. Uh, calm, We've got an event coming up at the end of this month in Colorado, uh, yep, on the 28th. That'll be awesome. 
And then a couple more sounds like lined up. We'll take off with runway 290 heading 360. Three, uh, There's that over, over volume problem again. That's too bad. February 6th, 15th, and 24th. Put them down on the calendar. Just make sure you don't have the first Monday in February booked up there, Jet Pilot Cinnamon. November 626, November. Wind calm, runway 36, clear to land. Uh, traffic on a three mile final for the crossing runway. Runway 36, clear to land, and copy the traffic 626, November. Now let's see how the rollout looks here after the 360. Field. There's coming around. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. I tried to make it kind of a little bit of an oval so that we would be better lined up, but I actually turned her too tight, didn't I? All right, so back to configuring here. We've got approximately five miles, I would say. We do have uh, landing traffic on the other runway. Okay, we go a notch of flaps there. Gear coming down. We're a bit low here at 900 foot. Let's try to get the speed down, like I said, down to 90. Let's get on the glide slope as well. We don't need to give up any more altitude. So we see some white on those poppies. There's our final notch of flaps. DC 3991, welcome to Portland. Exit right when able. Contact ground 121.9. Okay, there's our guy. There's the whites. Let's get down here. Between 500 and 1,000. We're just on the bottom edge of that glide slope, aren't we? And just a skosh fast. Landing predictions? Yes, no, number of bounces. Make them now. Earn your proper place in the Melvin Leroy landing guess Hall of Fame there we go that's better on the speed but I've dropped low again all right looks like someone's kind of lining up and waiting on two niner or at least holding short. Hopefully we'll give them something halfway decent to look at. Got to depart uh, to the left. Looks like that's where the ramp area is. down. We'll go bait it just because we can. This thing stops on a dime though. November 626 November. Welcome to Portland. Thanks for your help. You can exit left when able. Contact ground 121.9 or have a day. Alright. Exit left and over to ground 626 November. Just about missed that guy. Talking about how good this thing stops and I went a little past but that's okay. Get all out of the way and stop right there. <laughs> all right, let's look. Uh, not familiar with the airfield, so let's just take a quick peek here and see what we've got. 
Alright, uh, ba da ba da. So we made, I think we made Mike here. So, the whiskey apron, the commercial apron, oh, down here, all the way down. I uh, kind of like the whiskey apron better because that's. No, we landed here. Wait a second. I'm looking at Bangor. That's not where I. That's where I'm going to be eventually. Hold the phone, Central. I need to get the heck out of the way here, is what I need to do. Alright, yeah, we need to just kind of come right in here. De icing pad, maybe. Alright, let's go to ground. Let's talk to them. It's a quick turnaround, regardless. 121 decimal niner. Hopefully, nobody's been wanting to land behind us and use this taxiway. Portland ground, hello, November 626 November. We're clear of the active. November 26 November, uh, good evening. So, what's your gate tonight? Uh, it, actually, if we could just kind of get in maybe to the de-ice pad, uh, we're going to make a quick turnaround and uh, continue our flight. 626 November, Roger. Uh, you want to taxi to 29 again? Uh, whatever works best for your, uh, you know, for, for you guys, honestly. Um, so I can just pull straight in here or, or wherever I can just be out of the way of the big heavies. 626 November, Roger. Uh, I don't have your flight plan for departure from Portland, so are you BFR? Yeah, and I need to file that. That's, like I said, I just need to get to a spot where I can pull off and, and get all that on file for you guys. 626 November, Roger. You can make a right turn on Charlie and taxi to the GA ramp and uh, you can remain the frequency and file the flight plan for you. Okay, right turn to the GA ramp, and then we'll get the flight plan filed. Thanks, uh, 626 November. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I was looking at Bangor, and that's not going to work. One Papa Alpha, you ready for copy? If we're ready there is an FBO one over here. One Papa Alpha, uh, and it looks like maybe, maybe this could be it. There's, yeah, there's the refueling. So in, in the P3D world, by the way, if you uh, have default scenery like I have uh, most of the time, the dead giveaway for the FBO is this little fuel pump. <laughs> okay, so confirming we're going to remain at or below we don't need 3, fuel. I don't think. We'll check. We just need a place to park. This alpha. looks like a pretty good spot. Yep, there's a bunch of other guys. The CRJ is is the uh, is the aircraft of choice for my um, AI recognition. Okay, let's clean up the flaps. That's uh, we never did put the landing lights on. All right, so now let's see. Um, we want to. We want to play a little bit on this leg, so we're going to file. We're going to file. VFR. We don't want flight following. We want to depart, and we're going to actually fly out here to the Heron's Nest. It's about a 32-mile leg. We're going to tr attempt to put it down on the Heron's Nest, and then we're going to fly from there up into Bangor and we can we can do the same thing we just did here we can kind of report as we as we get closer and get a new squat code and all that fun stuff but let's Portland ground. We're gonna, so we're going to kind of I don't know how we're going to try to uh, put that in here BGR and I think if we had to we would just come straight back to Portland uh, I think we could be airborne here in the next seven minutes this looks to me like, well, it's supposed to be an hour and one minutes. And we're going to stay at 1,500. Uh, actually, we have to go a little bit higher than that. 3,500 because there's some terrain at 1,800. So let's see. Um, VFR still up the, up the coast. Uh, I'm going to just put this in there. I don't know if that's the way to put it, but... Oh, we're not slant whiskey. What in the world? We're slant alpha. Okay, let's see. Portland to Bangor. Um, yeah, that I think looks pretty good. We'll file that. And let me catch up on the chat here. I'm sure that there's been 
all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, you know, Titanium Druid, that is one thing. For all the crap people are giving uh, X-Pilot, they've figured out how to keep that stupid volume thing under control. I don't know. Nothing on the third jet pilot. Cinnamon says that's cool. That's when our next uh, Bush League event is planned. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Very nice. It's a uh, oh, it's a one squeak. Yeah. <laughs> I love the uh, I love the sound effects with the brakes on this thing. Two thing I like about this the best is is the squeak of the brakes and then what the clunk that the gear makes when it when you retract it or you extend it. Uh, and you can you can adjust that by the way to make it more if you want. Black Fox checking in. Hello. Good evening yourself, my good man. Um, no, there's a lot going on. And uh, speaking of that, our friend Slant Alpha is doing the PAVD to PANC again. Flying Wild Alaska Night with the Era Alaska Virtual. So I don't know much about these guys, but it looks like if you go to eraalaskavirtual.com, um, you can uh, find out what's going on. Tell them Melvin sent you and receive 25% off of all hot chocolate beverages. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they sound like a, a new up and coming virtual airline that bases their stuff off of that old show. I don't know if you used to watch Flying Wild Alaska with the Tweedo family, uh, but uh, sounds, like a, sounds like a fun group. And, uh, and also up there in the Somewhere in the Great White North, Agent Bravo 7 is flying her 727 as part of a like a world tour that she's doing. But anyway, so yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the the heron's nest. Yep, the heron's nest. It's a it's an eye blue yonder. Um, eye blue yonder product. Now. Here is something we're going to do, though. Okay, so we have to do this, guys. To find this, this is scattered amongst the a bunch of these little chain islands in here south of Booth, Booth Bay Harbor. And I I do need a little bit of help because I don't go out here very often. About, about three times a year, I think. So I use, what did I use? I have a note to myself. So I need to tune in the Augusta VOR. At 111.40, it is on the 180 radial, 34 nautical miles. So we have a little reference here. If we depart due east for 32 miles, we're going to be pretty close. But we need to also have that Augusta VOR. And that is right here. So this is essentially what I'm creating for myself. If I tune in Augusta... Now Augusta, this says for some reason 1495. It's that's not that's not what I want. Yeah, the Augusta VOR is 1114. But what again? What it shows me is this. Right, so what's your it gives me well from here up it's it's zero zero zero. So that means this is basically 180. It doesn't quite line up there, but that gets you again pretty much in the ballpark. So 34 miles. Now, so that's, if you wonder why I'm doing that, that's why. I just, uh, and, and stick with me there. When we fly this, you'll you'll see what I mean. You'll see why that's kind of kind of helpful. All right, so 111.40, I think I have that in because I was yep, messing around up here already. And then spin this guy around to 180. Not picking anything up just yet. But that's uh, yeah, that will change here, your, uh, <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully, he says, and then 3,500. Hey, one second up the 6,500 sounds great. Spin that in. I actually need to take a quick trip to the little pilot's room. Be right back. Enjoy the sights and sounds. Number one Tango Delta, bias ready for copy. We're ready. Number one Tango Delta, clear to. Uh, correction, uh, you uh, maintain BFR out or below 2,500. The part of frequency is 119.75. Squawk is uh, 2011. Now, one thing it also will maintain 2,500. Uh, departure is 119.750. Squawk 2011. Number 
one Tango Delta, Reback correct, advise for for taxi, you can spray ground with two nine information Victor is current, altimeter three zero two four. Portland ground, one Tango Delta is ready to taxi. One Tango Delta, run with two nine or taxi via Charlie Alpha Hold Short, run with three six. Hey, Charlie Alpha Hold Short, run with three six, one Tango Delta. All right, all right, all right, my friends. Let's see, let's see. So we are now in Portland. Let me get the right chart pulled up here. There comes somebody, and there goes somebody. Again, those could, those guys could be whoever. Oh, that is that guy a helicopter? Interesting. Okay. We came in here, on the left on Gulf, either Gulf or Alpha, we're up here by the FBO. Looks like they're sending people out on 36 or 29er. So we're going to be heading down. So here we go. Titanium Druid. I'm anticipating Charlie Cross 29er. Hold short 36 or Charlie Alpha cross 36 but I am uh, at the same time I have this guy pulled up here and I'm going to be typing in notes whatever they tell me Charlie Alpha cross 29er or whatever you know just to just to make a little little note to yourself because I know I, I feel your pain and I have had to ask for clarification way too many times now Portland ground, at Duke 626, November. Number one, Tango Delta, contact uh, Tower 120.9er. Over to Tower 1, Delta. That's it, Crafts, I get the call sign. Yes, sir, 626, November. Number 626, November, on ground, go ahead. Yes, sir, uh, we'd like to request VFR uh, departure to the northeast. Number one. All right, there we go. Here goes the next guy. Picture what you want. That's a Pilatus PC-12. That's a Baron 58. That's a Phenom 300. It's a whatever you want it to be. Use your Number use your imagination. November, you clear to Bangor. Be uh, correction, uh, sir. Are you IFR or BFR today? I should. I uh, intended to file VFR. If I clicked that wrong, my apologies. Don't worry about it. Let me change that for you, and uh, let me know when you're ready for copy. Two six Now we're ready for copy. Go ahead. November six to uh, November six to six November. Roger. So maintain out below two thousand five hundred. Departure frequency is one one nine zero point seven five, and squawk is two zero one two. All right, cleared uh, VFR departure uh, out of below two thousand five hundred. Squawk nineteen seventy five. Excuse me, departure frequency 1975, squawk 2012, 626 November. 626 November, read back correct, uh, by the for taxi, spec ground with 29, information, uh, Victor is current, uh, correction, information, whiskey is current, altimeter 3024. And we have whiskey and we're ready for taxi. Number 34, Mike Whiskey, contact our 120.9 today. 120.9, thanks, for Mike Whiskey. Number 626. Charlie Alpha Hold Short 36, 626 November. All right, so that's basically what we thought we'd get. Charlie Alpha, uh, oh, they're going to give us, yeah, so they're going to kind of give us two niners. So Charlie Alpha and then Hold Short 26, 36, sorry. Now yeah, let's go find Charlie. And uh, this time we'll put taxi lights on like we're supposed to. Spin it around and Charlie takes us down here to the south. Let's 
kind of the one we came in on. Oh, look at the traffic coming in. That looks pretty cool. All right, my kingdom for a taxiway sign. Here we go. We got one coming up. We have to take a left on Alpha. All right, yep, we are indeed on Charlie. This might be Alpha right here. Nope, this is Gulf. We have one more to go down. Next left-hand turn will be where we need to be. So the challenge, yep, this is going to be the challenge of the day, boys and girls. First of all, can we find the heron's nest? Secondly, will we be able to land on the heron's nest? I don't know how long the heron's nest is. I know it's, you know, not too bad to put down Number like a... Left on Alpha and over to Tower, November 626 November. Good night. Good night. All right. Yep, we're in sequence. So that's a Diamond DA62. Awesome. Awesome. That's a that's a plane. That's like a that's like the cousin of this Duke 60 12090. Okay, back over. Kind of working our way back here. And Tower, hello again, Duke 626 November. We're behind the diamond uh, on Alpha holding short of 36. And then he told me that departure 1975. So we'll put that back on. Cross 36 on Alpha, 626 November. Is there really even such a thing as a landline anymore? Come on, ATC. Who are you Tower trying to American fool? Two with you, uh, 11 miles out for uh, ILS 2-9. Uh, we're at 737. Here comes a 7. American nope. Two. Is that 73 or is that uh, a little Tower Airbus two. like a 319? He looked like he was a bit long and maybe uh, going to have to go around. Three mile final. We'll watch for that traffic and we'll wait for that landing clearance at 3 miles for American 2. Exit right on oh, he must have made her. Very good. It looked a little high, but found a way down. That's the important thing. All right, so yeah, Black Fox is saying that uh, Agent Bravo 7 passed his neck of the woods there. Only about 230 miles to the north. That's just around the corner for you guys, right? So the if this is the Vertex Sim Diamond DA62, two nine or lineup of weight six two six November. If this is the Vertex Sim, I know it's not because it looks like a CRJ. But if it is the Vertex Sim DA62, that is actually made by one of the two people that used to work for Real Air, the maker of the Beechcraft Duke 60. So, uh, was it really, Mike? Nice. Were you too high or was it just my rendering? Did you have to slam it down Melvin Leroy style? Dead on. All right, must have just been my, uh, my rendering here. Jet Pilot Cinnamon, a, a real-life, legit pilot, so he knows what the heck he's doing. I will not question and second-guess him. All right. As I can't even get lined up here on this. Okay, there we go. All right, uh, taxi lights off. Landing light can come on. That's pretty cool, man. Small world. So again, we're going to try to make right traffic departure here, approximately 040. Clear for takeoff, runway 29 or on course, departure approved. We have the traffic, 626 November. Oh, I see what you're saying, Jet Pilot Cinnamon. You were coming in on 36. 
<laughs> Thank you, sir. I, I look forward now to going back and watching my stream to see the see if I how much of that I caught. There we go. Airspeed's live 80 knots. V1 and it rotates. And there we go. Positive rate. Gears coming up. Quickly approaching flap speed. So flaps are coming up. Pull the power back a little bit to climb power. Let's make that right hand turn, 040. Let's go see if we can play around at the heron's nest. Rotato potato. I like that. I like that. One of the guys that I November watch. Two, six. Correction, November 626, November contact departure. Good day. Duke 626, November over to departure. Good day. There we go. Portland departure. Hello again. Duke 626 November climbing 1,500. 626 November Portland departure radar contact climb maintain at 3,500. 3,500 626 November. Anyway, one guy that I watch, I can't remember who it is, likes to say Rotate. Makes me think of a Christmas story where. He, he thinks he's speaking Italian when he sees the box marked Fragile. Alright, pull the power back. Pull the power back. We're making... We're climbing really well. I do feel a little bit of bumpity bumps here that we didn't have earlier, which is interesting since we have uh, basically calm winds here on the ground, but... All right. And again, hand flying. Nothing but hand flying. And let's trim it out. Let's see if we can get the airspeed to uh, cooperate here. Goodness sakes, it wants to go, boys. It wants to go. This <laughs> is a fun airplane. So yeah, that Diamond DA-62 was uh, was on my short list for planes to investigate in the X-plane world. The, the Vertex Sim creation is, from what I understand, a magnificent add-on. But it's a P3D only add-on, and I'm kind of done spending money in P3D, to be totally honest with you. But I might be curious to see what what the diamond. I know they have one in X plane, but just just to see how it matches up with the Vertex Sim at some point. But it's it's a little little ways down the list as far as propeller driven aircraft that I eventually plan to uh, have in the hangar. I think the TBM 900 is a little higher up right now. Um, what I really want is a, I want a, I want a Dash 8, I want a, just a good Q400. Now I, I know Fly J Sim is making one, but they're like in, like early, early alpha testing, so that's a ways off. But I think that would be a super fun plane to have, propeller driven wise. And uh... And the King Air 350i, it's kind of intriguing as well. Um, so there's just a lot of a lot of fun propeller-driven aircraft out there that uh, eventually will make their way into my hangar. But as for now, pretty darn happy and satisfied with what I have. And well, I think it was Downwind Sim that was talking about. I already have too many aircraft in my hangar that I don't know how to fly. Why add one more? And that's so true. <laughs> so very true. Okay. So I need to reset my timer. This, again, is a fairly short leg. It's a 32 nautical mile leg. So, um, you know, at 180, 
Delta We're looking at about eight minutes. I didn't start my uh, timer right away, so it might even be less than that now. But what we'll eventually find here is... Oh, my goodness. I need to be 0, 9, or 0. I don't... Where did I get 0, 4, 0? Uh, so that's going to make a little bit of a navigational challenge here. Portland approach. Good evening, Charlie. Whiskey. I do not have any idea where zero four zero came from. So I've just flown a little further north than I need to. Well, okay. Nothing I can do about it now. Um, I will. Let's let's set this. Instead of zero nine zero, let's go zero eight zero and just see if we can't maybe correct a little bit. I do have an airfield right here. Let's let's just take a peek and see. Um, this could be. This looks like if it's if it's nope. It's got it's got intersecting runways. I was gonna say if it's got two parallel north running runways, that's Brunswick Executive, but it's not. It has crisscrossing runways, so good lord, who knows? Who knows? There's so many little airports around here, it's crazy. And actually, it could be, that could be Auburn. Actually, I think that's Auburn, Lewiston. I think I did get maybe that, that far north. Alright, well, I know where I'm at then. And I guess the good news is that I'll probably be picking up that VOR that could take me straight out there. It's not bad to miss, you know, to the to the north on this deal because then you can always turn, um, or it's not not bad to miss west, I should say, because you can always turn east. And as you can see, there's all kinds of these little little islands here and there and everywhere. I think if we had about maybe 0, 8, 0, maybe even a little bit more, how about about 1, 0, 0, we might, we might kind of balance it out. We'll be pretty close. I feel good about finding it. This is a kind of a unique airport or airstrip in that it also has a seaport. So if you have a plane on floats, you can bring that in. The, the Beaver is like the perfect plane up here because you can take off from uh, one of these, you know, you take off from Portland with your uh, with your floats and the wheels down and um, land in the water. Which is a little easier, I think, than landing on the... Uh, the airstrip, at least at this one. Alright. So we're about four minutes out. Again, it was a little bit of a late start. So uh, it's going to be in this island chain out here, I think. That guy's, I think that guy's just a little too soon. Piper Warrior, I have one of those. Uh, I've got the traffic inside. Number zero, air crash in six five, Lima, you'll be fine with the traffic number two. For so I'm going to need to let this guy know what we're planning on doing uh, here, just so he doesn't, uh... American 713, contact Portland, tower 120. Just so he doesn't look at his radar and wonder what we're doing. I mean, we're cleared VFR, essentially. A Portland approach, Duke 626, November. Uh, yes, sir. We'd like to attempt uh, a landing at uh, the Heron's Nest here, which is uh, about 10 miles uh, from our current position before we proceed to Bangor. Is that okay? All right. Good deal. I'm thinking. I. Negative. There. It's a fictional one. Uh, I don't believe there is one. 
626 November report inside. Okay, we'll report uh, 626 November. I think that's our guy right there. So let's let's just have a little flyover. American 551 reduce speed. What does the wind favor? The winds right now are not much. It's from the north at three knots, where we currently are. It might be zero zero. Mike Echo. Why does that ring a bell? It's a anyway. It's it's created by the I Blue Yonder guys, and it's not it's not a real place, but they just. <laughs> It was their, it was like their debut scenery, and now they've got a bunch of stuff up, and they even have some stuff on uh, on orbits. Somebody checked in here. Who checked in on me? Beast God, W O T. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to Prop Culture. America 314. Hey, good to have you along, man. I hope you're enjoying the flight. I'm assuming. You're up here in the uh, Boston virtual area. Love this place. Thanks for stopping by. All things propeller driven. Just a bunch of bunch of fun guys to hang out with, and one one young lady who we consider to be the muscle of the group, Agent Bravo Seven. When she uh, when she sneaks in she's kind of acts like she's embarrassed to be seen with us but i think secretly she really kind of likes hanging out with us yep this is definitely the airfield so i'm gonna i'm gonna report yeah portland approach uh november 626 november we have the heron's nest Sir, 626 november roger radar services terminated for change approved just report back airborne if you want to fly following all right we'll uh head over to unicom and report back airborne 626 november uh, do I have a VFR switch? Yes, I do. Boom. Right there. 2280. And so I think what we're going to need to do here is, first of all, slow down. So if anything, the approach is favoring, it's favoring a north approach, which means I essentially I need to kind of make a right-hand traffic pattern. Yep, that's it. You can see just a little bit of it right there. So um, I think it runs like uh, almost, it almost runs, eh, almost as a east-west if I, I'm not mistaken. So, whoops, hold on here. We don't want to go into the uh, ocean. So let's just kind of get a feel for what it looks like. We may end up flying a, a, a couple of times past it just to get lined up and all that good stuff. I'm going to come out here and make a report. Uh, Heron's Nest traffic, Duke 626 November. We're making right traffic for a northerly approach, Heron's Nest. I don't think you can sp I'm trying to remember. I don't think you can spawn there. I don't know. But uh, let's, let's see if we can get turned around and find this place. get a notch of flaps in kind of get us stabilized just a bit spin it around again I think I think it's an east-west sort of orientation here so we may be crosswind regardless luckily it's not it's a it's a very low wind if we if if we have our druthers I mean what I'll probably end up doing to be totally honest with you is coming around the other way because the the island gives you a little bit more uphill that way. All right, where the heck are we? Now I've lost my island. Is that it over there? Where are you, Heron's Nest? Where did you go? <laughs> uh, I've lost my air... I've lost my island. VOR tells me I need to keep going back this way, so let's, uh, uh, is that it right there? Yes, it is. All right, so I'm right over the top of it. So this, well, this is definitely more of a northerly 
approach, isn't it? All right, what's the orientation of it, though? I think that's the key here. I want to set that. Looks like it looks like we're pretty close to where we need to be. So let's just spin this around. Let's call it about zero four zero, and and we'll just go with that. I'm going to make left traffic so I don't lose it this time. And Heron's Nest, Duke, 626 November. We're going to make left traffic, runway 4, Heron's Nest. I don't want a climbing left-hand turn here, my friend. Let's uh, let's get down to 1,000. Neither approach is simple. It does have a hill right in the middle, so you're kind of, you're getting essentially the benefit of an uphill landing either way. It's just that the approach that's more to the south, the hill is just a little bit longer. Heron's Nest traffic, Duke 626 November, left downwind, runway 4, Heron's Nest. We'll try to take this out just a ways here and make sure we get nice and slow. Don't need to be in a big hurry. There's our island. Okay, we're in good shape. Take it clear out past the end of this island, I'm, I think at least, before we make our turn. And that way we can be fairly well. I'm gonna, I want to try to be configured here before I start to turn even turn base. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out the landing gear right now. All right, landing lights already on. Taxi light coming on. Not that I need them, but uh, what the heck? It makes me makes me feel a little bit better about life. 700 foot. I think that's probably pretty good. The the island itself is elevated slightly. I'd say the elevation is it's probably 150 foot or something like that. So we're gonna we're gonna see. I found it downwind. Now can I land it? That's the question. Heron's Nest traffic, Duke 626 November, left base, runway four, Heron's Nest. So here we go. We're about to find out, my friends. We are configured, we're slow. And we're going to just take a look-see. Hey, just keep it coming around town here. There it is. Heron's Nest traffic, Duke 626 November. On the final, runway 4, Heron's Nest. Let's we'll just keep it coming. Keep it coming. We have a notch of flaps. We have the gear down. We're going to put the final notch of flaps in. We are 700 feet, which I think is about 500 feet above the runway. We're rolling out. Not half bad. Okay, we've got a shot here. Final notch of flaps coming in. And I feel comfortable as low as about 85. I think we start to stall around 80. So I'm going to try to hold it here 85-ish. And then uh, this is not going to be for the faint of heart because I'm not going to buttery smooth this bad boy. We're going to plunk it down. And then we've got a rough runway. It's an uphill slope. We're going to be full beta. We're going to be full brakes. We're going to be trying to get it stopped on the downhill. And if it's not, doesn't feel 100% right, we're just going to firewall it. We're going to go around and we'll try again. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. A little bit maybe low on the profile, but airspeed's okay. I think I'm going to clear the fence. All right, here we go. Cut the power. Full beta. Full brakes. Ha 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 
virtual GA. It's checking in just at the right time. How about that, man? How about that? Okay, I gotta just give you some perspective here. <sighs> That's us, man. That's us. All right. What can't this plane do, man? I'm telling you what. Thanks, guys. That uh, makes me feel a little bit better since I um, currently have an airframe sitting there in the uh, <laughs> the Binghamton Bingham, area. So that was okay. That was okay. Now, we haven't... Uh, haven't taken off yet guys so let's not let's not hurt our arms patting me on the back here just quite yet but let's let's taxi down if you haven't seen this this is a cool little this is a cool little scenery I mean, it really is let's take you over here we'll take a peek around and catch our breath and yeah i mean look we're at 100 foot so at the top of this hill i think we got to be close to 150 maybe maybe not maybe the top of the hill is a is a hundred And yes, I did go full beta before I touched down. I I went there. I had a feeling when I took this into um, the locker airstrip there in Italy that that this would have a chance to to land here as well. So happy happy we were able to pull it off. By the way, I actually do know you can spawn here because you you spawn now that I remember you spawn right in this little heron's nest hangar how cool is that downwind sim you can appreciate that look at that there you go that sets the bar man cue the ice <laughs> so here's the other thing though that's cool about this it has this little seaport and uh, again this is another you can pull your plane all the way up into that it's open and then it has the has the lights that go all the way out and this does light up this is the only part of the airfield that actually is lit so if you come in at night you can in your float plane i should say <laughs> uh, you can you can land there so yeah should have brought your fishing rod that's right there's something out here that we could be we could be chasing but uh so yeah welcome to the heron's nest don't hit those big X's. I think that's kind of what it means there. All right. Well, let me get turned around. Then we'll get our bearings. And, uh, yeah, the prop strike would be ideal. I mean, I've taken the, I've taken the, uh, just the regular A to A 182 in here. I also have the Carinata 172 that I've taken in here. And I've obviously taken, you know, the Milvis Beaver is just like, made for this type of place so for us to have any shot at this though guys we're going to have to be pretty close to to rotation speed at the top of this hill we're not going to want to we don't have much room on the other side but before i do that i need to breathe for just a second and i do need to figure out where we're going on the map here so we we landed here approximately uh 043 heading that takes us up to uh, to Bangor, Maine. We'll pick up. We'll probably just hop back on and, and check back in with uh, departure. And uh, let's see. We from a from a VFR perspective, I think what we actually what we ought to do is we ought to chase this kind of over to Knox County, as we can see that airport put that in and then we could just come up this this is the Penobscot Bay we could just follow Penobscot Bay we'll have a the Belfast Airport but we can follow this bay all the way up essentially just keep coming up here to Bangor I think that's going to be the plan of attack we've got Islesboro here and Belfast and so I think that looks like it. so we'll actually head out of here at about 067 okay but before we do any of that business, we need to get airborne. And uh, we did, we're still filed at 3,500, so I'll leave that in there. I'm not going to mess with the altitude, or the altimeter, I, I should say. Taxi light on. 
it was already on. Uh, pedo heats are still on. I'm going to go flaps approach and make sure that our oh, our trim, let's get our trim set. There we go. You cannot do the old short field pop up on this very easily. So I'm totally, I'm going to, I'm going to red line it here and um, just try to get everything as going as fast as I can up the hill. I think we did the easy part. Okay, prop and condition levers full forward. Here comes the thrust. We'll hold the brakes as long as we can. All right, we're fully full power. Here we go, boys and girls. Up the hill we go. We're looking for, again, we're looking for 90. We're bouncing. There's 60. There's 80. I think we're going to be fine, guys. Pulling back on the stick. And, yes. Gear up. Pull back on the power as we are redlining. Flaps up. We are almost on a 067 heading right now, so that worked out way better than I thought it would. <laughs> Only one yikes from the crowd. That's that's not bad. Alrighty. I forgot to announce my intentions to the Heron's Nest traffic, but uh, otherwise. I'll call that a successful visit. We will be back. We will be back, my friend. Boom. That's an awesome place, guys. Awesome plane, awesome airstrip. Great combination. Okay, so we're looking for Knox County. 27 nautical miles. I'm going to go ahead and pop in the... Uh, the timer you know, so what do we got here about six six or seven minutes get up to 3,500 and uh, you know I don't know we're, we're not gonna worry about checking back in I don't think with uh, with departure I think we're just gonna stay VFR here at 3,500. I think that'll be just fine. We could use, if we wanted to, we could use that Augusta State VOR. Let's see. About... Uh, looks like somewhere about the 135 radial would get us there. Let's just, let's just pop that in just to have... And I have no idea how far away. But... Uh, yeah, when we when that starts to center up, we'll know we're at least getting close. And uh, the approach controller did tell me that I only needed to contact him if I wanted to continue flight following. I wonder if they, I wonder if they kind of prefer that, honestly, with an event going on. What do we got? Eh, only nine arrivals and nine departures into Bangor right now, so I think they're fine. Portland has been the busier one. Portland Jetport still 28 arrivals and seven departures. That's pretty cool for a for a Monday. That's awesome, guys. Thanks for supporting Boston Virtual. Here comes some precipitation. Um, we're probably cold enough, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're cold enough. Let's go left, right. Let's put prop heat on. Windshield de-icer on. That'd be the only thing that would kind of screw up our day here is to uh, run into some icing problems. We are going to try to get down because we are BFR. So let's, uh, let's drop down here to, you know, 2,000, 1,500, stay below this business. Look at my speed.
cool thing about getting up here, the further north you get, the more kind of hilly and even mountainy you get, which is kind of cool. I talk a lot about the diversity. I was really surprised at the diversity of terrain that you find in this airspace, the Boston virtual airspace. You know, you you expect the the coastline and you expect the the big international airports and you know, but you don't expect rural. You don't expect high altitude and uh, you know stuff like that and, and you get that it's pretty cool they do a pilot rating program that's based upon the same program that the Batstar folks have set up but they do their own version of it and it's it's based all on airports that are here in the in the Boston virtual ARTC area so you know you're flying into Bangor, you're flying into Nantucket, you're flying into Burlington, you know, you're doing some Boston and Providence and Bradley and it's it's pretty cool. You can you can essentially get every every type of flying that you that you ever need just right up in, in here. And I don't know where the Vatstar folks base their uh, base their training on, but I know that the if you pick up the the rating program, the PRP through Boston Virtual, it, it's recognized also with uh, the Batstar people and with Batsim. All right, so we're down here at 2200. Not exactly eastbound VFR altitude, but. I think we'll slowly bleed her off, try to get it down to 1,500. Actually, it looks like we might be able to climb back up, but I think 1,500 is going to be just fine. The Bangor altitude, by the way, I better check that before I say. So Bangor's, um, yeah, it's a 192, so if we're, if we're there, I think we're in good shape. I think this is Knox County right here. Do I have any movement just yet? I think this is the big Penobscot Bay that we need to follow. Knox County does have uh, multiple intersecting runways here. So if we see a two runway situation, I think we're in good shape. Plus, this will start to center up. And it looks like it's starting to move just a little bit. So I think we're in, in good shape. And our sectional is telling us that we just kind of need to turn like basically zero, kind of zero three five or zero four zero, but just essentially we're going to kind of track up the uh, up the bay here. Yeah, that's about six minutes, so I think we're uh, we're in great shape there. We'll look for that Belfast Muni as our next. Uh, as our next waypoint. Yep, there comes the VOR needle. And I can't really see it, but I I did see as we were oh there it is. Yep. Got definitely has the two intersecting runways. So I feel pretty good about that being Knox County. I think Knox County is even one of the airfields that they feature in the pilot rating program. Okay, so we'll turn and head towards Belfast. And um, you know, again, we could use Augusta State if we wanted to. I kind of feel like the uh, the bay itself, though, is going to be is going to be in good shape. Um, Bangor does have its own um, VOR, by the way, that we could track if we need to. And it has uh, it's runway 15 and runway 33. So I think we're going to just, while we have some time, we're just going to tune that in. I'm going to actually take this off. I don't, we don't need that right now. Just, 
Oh, that's tuning something in here. I didn't intend to. So we have a straight line here. Yep, I guess that doesn't work that way. All right, so we'll chase the bay up. I'm going to go ahead and set my timer again. It looks like we are, according to the section, about 21 miles to Belfast. So, you know, seven minutes or so. Maybe not quite that, actually. More like uh, five to six minutes. Although we did slow down just a little bit. I guess we're climbing back up. I didn't realize we were... <laughs> we've been inching the wrong way. I was trying to get down to 1,500, and we're now back up over 3,500, so... I guess we'll go ahead and just take 3,500. And, uh, yeah, we could probably check in. Let's let's grab a quick ATIS here while we have a sec. I'm seeing information hotel. I'm going to just make a note here. Information hotel. Looks like they are... Landing visual runway 33, which is cool because that's basically straight in. Don't take your eyes off of the flight instruments for too long there, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let's see, Age of Bravo 7 still airborne. Slant Alpha still airborne. Slant Alpha does look like he's fighting some serious, serious weather. Holy buckets. Yowza. He's Mr. IMC right now. Yowza. see our friend agent Bravo 7 she's doing some navigation work herself here it's like she's trying to figure out a an arrival of some sort so she must be getting uh, she must be getting ready to land I know virtual GA I'm I'm with you man it's uh, they, they've got to, I mean, they've got to get it figured out soon in X-Plane, right? They, they, X-Plane people, I mean, they, they present themselves as being so, you know, such a more advanced modern platform. And, and so I'm thinking to myself, well, if P3D can put snow on the ground, in their clunky old sim, what's up, X-Plane? Come on. And I know that a lot of the sceneries that you can buy, like the airfields, they'll model snow and, and that. So, I mean, but that almost looks worse because then you have, you know, hundreds of miles of summer and this little white square that stands out. <laughs> but, yeah, that's... Until they get that figured out, I, I think that there will always be a place for P3D, at least in my stream, just because I, I do enjoy the winter. And honestly, even more than the winter up here, the fall colors, the foliage that they model is, is outstanding. It really is something else. All right, so we're four minutes, four minutes out from Knox County. We are looking for Belfast on the left. We also have Islesboro, which might be coming up here on this little island. This is little, little tiny 57 Bravo. What does it have? It's a asphalt runway. It, it's oriented north and south, so let's uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled for a little north and south runway here, which would be basically our line of flight. That's Islesboro. Maybe flying over the top of it, but uh, 
And then again out here, hopefully we'll see Belfast. And Belfast is... Um, Runway 15 and runway 33, so a little bit more kind of uh, a little bit more east-west, kind of more of a northeast-southwest, right? Thinking right? No, northwest-southeast orientation. That ought to be right in this area here as well. I'm seeing a little bit of a inlet here on my sectional. I actually think I think it was time to contact Bangor Tower. Or I should say approach 1895. I, think I see it up here. Bangor Approach, good evening, November 626, November 3,900, about 25 miles south of the airfield. Maybe too far, 20, what's the limit of our, of the voice range? We might be a little too far out, actually. All right, well, we'll just keep going. And, uh, yeah, there we go. There's our little Belfast airport. So from there, 25 nautical miles. Probably about six minutes. We'll set the timer right now. I'm not going to worry about the VOR. We're just going to follow, essentially, this waterway kind of winds. You can see the little river channel up there. That takes you right into the town of Bangor. And then uh, the airfield is... is just right there, we'll be landing runway 33. Is the pilotage dead reckoning? Um, yeah, th that's what I'm doing. To the to the extent that you can in P3D. Let's be honest, P3D is not ortho scenery, and uh, so it has its limitations. But um, if you have some of the orbic stuff in there. You know, some of the, they've got a global mesh that helps and um, not necessarily this part of the area, but like they really have some, some much, much better scenery um, overlays like out in the, in the West Coast, um, up and down, really Southern SoCal, NorCal, Pacific Northwest, um, the Pacific Fjords and into Alaska. You can really do a lot better pilotage, but yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So here's here's kind of what I'm I'm seeing in front of me, and I'm seeing this right here. This we just went past Belfast. We're following how this this little uh, Penobscot Bay kind of narrows and goes into this little river channel up to Bangor, and that's essentially what we have here narrowing the river channel leads us up there vfr true vfr true pilotage in p3d is uh it's a lot more challenging no question about it i think we must have been a little too far away from uh bangor approach what i have 19 whoops 19 what did i do maybe they changed on me 18 One eight nine two five. Oh, well, that's the problem. Eighteen ninety two. Let's try that. Bangor approach. Good evening, Duke six two six November three thousand two hundred inbound from the south. Duke six two six November Bangor approach. Squawk two four two one. Twenty four twenty one six two six November. All right, twenty four. 20, 1, and 1. And that's on ALT. Or mode Charlie on V Pilot. 66 November, radar contact, 200 miles to the south of Bangor Airport. The altimeter 3022, you can proceed to the bounty spec 33. 
3022 and we'll expect uh, straight in runway 33 626 November 3022 all right I'm gonna go ahead we're 20 miles out let's start uh, let's start slowing down we'll start our descent again the, the Bangor out um, the airport elevation is only about 192 feet so we do need to we need to cut a little bit of altitude here we can start kind of a gentle 500 foot per minute we don't have to be in a big hurry we don't have a ton of altitude to leave lose here if we get to 1500 I think that's going to be good enough for now um, that's that's roughly that's roughly a pattern altitude now hopefully we, don't, we won't have to have to fly a pattern but And then also we can slow down in case there's some uh, some Number other. 66 November, turn left heading 020. Left turn 020, 626 November. All right, so he sees us. He sees we're a little off. And that that river does take us kind of to the east of the airfield, so that's nice of him to. But here's the here's the issue. So all of these little fingers and channels and stuff. They're really not rendered on the sectional, and so yeah. You, you, pop out. you can uh, you can turn it straight in towards the numbers if you're able. So my my thought in following this channel here is it would get us essentially on the almost on the left base for runway three three, but um, but I'll comply with with what our approach controller is saying. Now we will have tower, by the way, which is 12070, so let's go ahead and put that in while we have a little bit of time. And continue descent here. Don't need to level off just yet. Yeah, this uh, virtual GA, this this part of the country in the autumn, in the fall, this, is, this looks really, really nice. All kinds of oranges and yellows, and it's it's they do a nice job up here. There is a fair amount of, as you can see, kind of evergreen trees, but there's also a lot of other stuff that you don't see until the fall. Guy's voice sounds familiar. I wonder if he's one of our. Over to tower. Thanks. Have a great night. Wonder if he's one of our bush league guys. November, you can turn. Uh, you can enter a left base for runway three three and square your base turn to final traffic to follow the Skyhawk about uh, eleven o'clock and five miles for three three. Okay, we can uh, square the base. Turn off. Actually, you know what? Uh, tower uh, approach. I'm sorry, I don't have the airfield just yet. 66 November. 66 November, Roger. Turn right, heading 060. And right turn 060, and uh, we'll report the field. 66 November. Yeah, that's going to be hard to square that off if I don't see where it's at. Bravo, Bravo, Jet 1 all right, so that's the that's the that's the base leg. Now let's kind of peek out here and see uh, see what we can see. What's the deal here, guys? No runway lights, no nothing. So we should have also some hey, some. Uh, again, I will send to maintain 3,000. We'll take it up. Sorry. No problem. 615 Hotel Bravo to send to maintain 8,000. We should have a little bit of a of a city coming in here, and the and the airfield's kind of on the southwest corner of the city. So I don't see even any towns or anything just yet. So I think we got. Oh, there we go. At 626 November, we have the airfield. Rod, you can make a left base from way 33. And best forward speed up for as long as possible. 
All right, uh, we'll make left. Uh, we're we're on the left base, and we'll keep our speed up. 66 November. One Tango Delta, turn left heading zero five zero, and reduce speed to one eight. All right, was right over there, so I I feel. Trim down to one eight zero knots. There it is. Okay. At 626 November, we're turning final left, uh, left final runway 33. 6 November, Roger. Number 72, Mike Charlie, contact Portland approach 119.75. Good day. 119.75, 2 Mike Charlie, bye bye. Might have been a little bit late on that, actually. Eh, not too bad. Keep the speed up, he says. It's not something I've heard much. Oh, he's got. We got somebody really fast coming behind us, then, don't we? Holy cow! So this will be tricky because, yeah, I'm gonna have to slow down here at some point. I got to get flaps range. Over to tower uh, for 626 November. We'll see it. I slow down here. Bangor Tower, good evening, Duke 626 November on the final 3 3. Two zero point seven. yep, that's us. 226 November, Bangor Tower, wind 3306. You're about six behind, seven, uh, excuse me, a Cessna on the two mile final. Runway 33, clear to land number two. Runway 33, clear to land number two, 626 November. All right, so right in that sweet spot where I've got to keep my speed up but not get too fast. <laughs> we'll look for the traffic out in front of us here. I don't see any blinking lights. That's usually a dead giveaway for me, but... Gear coming down. Kachunk. Love that. Speed to 90. Five hundred foot per minute is what I'm after as well. a bit fast here. Going to end up being a little too high if I'm not careful. There's a good speed. Well, I did, never did see the uh, Cessna on final. Hopefully he's out of the way. Guess we'll be ready to go around if we need to. Okay, the final notch of flaps coming in. We're a little fast all the way in, so hopefully this will get us back down to about 90. Oh, there's some blinking lights. They're right on the <laughs> right on the threshold right now. So, all right, buddy. Can't slow down much more. I'm smelling a go around here, boys. Guy almost looks like he's there in like a lineup and wait situation. Okay, I'm gonna slow her down as much as I can. Try to buy myself a little bit of time. Just give this guy just an inch to get off. He should catch the first taxiway. If he's that, if he's a like a Skyhawk or something, can't get down below 80. Or Mr. Stallhorn comes on. Oh, there he goes. He's getting off. Perfect. Perfect. Overcorrected a little bit on the throttle. Oh yeah, Skyhawk. One Papa Alpha, I might have out of date uh, diagram here. What taxiway are you on? 
We actually didn't look when we came off, so not 100% <laughs> sure. One moment. Um, I see in the grass. Just if you want, you can hold short. He's out. got his Contact Tundra back. tires on. He's all he's all good. All right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, he must have some updated scenery. Angor Tower, good evening. TBM one taking Delta on final with information India. Well, that was a TBM that was behind me. No wonder they were wanting me to keep my speed up. Wind column, runway three three, clear to land number two, following a beach craft on short final. We're land number two. We'll follow the craft. One second, Alpha. Finger tower before we switch over. A little bit of a floaty one. Alpha but, uh, wanted to thank you very much for letting a 13-year-old land on his first ATC. What? No problem. Holy cow. That's awesome. 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 I don't know if you just heard that call, but that uh, sounds like that plane right in front of us. It was a 13-year-old that actually made the landing. That is so cool. 626 November, short of Alpha. Contact ground point niner. And we'll contact ground point niner, short of Alpha. Congratulations, by the way, 13-year-old. Hey, November 201, Papa Alpha, congratulations. One second, Alpha. That is so cool. He's already over to ground, so we're going to go to ground. What is ground? Ground point niner. Gotta love it. One, two, one, niner. I have no idea where I want to go here. Let's find out. So I'm on Kilo. Pretty much a little bit of right hand turn. And Bango Ground, Duke 626 November on Kilo, short of Alpha, uh, going to GA terminal. General Aviation via Kilo Bravo. Have a good evening. Kilo Bravo for 626 November. I want to give congratulations to the pilot in front of me who just made their first landing. Yep, tell your boy, well done. I have told him that multiple <laughs> times, but thank you again. <laughs> All right, so we go Alpha to Bravo. Here's Bravo, and uh, that's pretty doggone cool. A negative 80, yeah, it's hard to tell, Jet Pilot. I think, uh, I think it probably was a little bit firmer than that, but uh, ground, November 8, anyway. I'm, I'm not a guy that's going to win a landing contest, so that's okay. I'm fine with that. So, let's just let's just head in here somewhere. I don't know. We're just going to kind of take a little bit of a right-hand turn. Here, here's some other GA friends. And all in all, a successful flight, I think. I appreciate everybody who tuned in to watch. It's been a ton of fun. I uh, appreciate the, obviously, the uh, Boston Virtual Air Traffic Controllers. Thanks for setting up another fun GA event, another fun midweek GA event. It really uh, keeps guys like me, keeps, keeps the propeller heads. Uh, gives Bravo. us something to look forward to, and so I appreciate that a yeah, bunch. And looking forward to the next one. Again, uh, you're one of the reasons why I changed my stream schedule to be more of a Tuesday Thursday schedule, just because this is Tuesdays and Thursdays are normally the times that you do these. This just happened to be kind of a special day, so um, understood that. And uh, 
like I say, uh, much appreciated. Great job as always, ATC guys. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, a big thank you to everybody who uh, flew along with us. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down just a little bit here and so that I feel like I'm not hollering at you guys. Let's, uh, let's just turn things off. And let's talk about what's coming up on the stream here. We'll turn the anti-ice and all that good stuff off as well. Windshield lights. Yeah, there's a guy. He's uh, Someone's getting ready to go here. That's cool, man. But uh, So anyway, um, yeah, starter gen can come off. Uh, ignition can go off. Everything else there is closed, closed. Nothing. I didn't turn prop sync. Yep, that's good, 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 good. Everything else there looks good. Master avionics off. Inverter off. Battery off. Let's check uh, real quick on the chat uh, chat stream and see what's going on. Jet Pilot Cinema. Make sure to keep the 6th, the 15th, and the 24th open in the calendar. Yes, indeed. Jet Pilot Cinema. And I only have one thing that's uh that's potentially gonna be between now and then and that is a motherboard update fingers crossed and uh oh bangor uh delivery in the chat yeah nice uh brosenberg thank you so much again for for putting this on and being a part of it and i appreciate the follow as well welcome to uh welcome to prop culture good to have you along uh Downwind, nice little trip. Yep, uh, it was. It was a good one. Night, uh, good night, Virtual GA. Thanks again for checking in. Enjoyed uh, your stream the other night as well. And um, let's see. Yeah, Brosenberg, you tell the events coordinator, said thanks. Yeah, tell Evan Ryder. He needs to get to work, man. The guy's a slacker. He, I think he only does like five things at once. Tell Josh Nunn I said hello as well. To, uh, Jamashid, uh, I can never say his name. Wallace, tell him hello as well. I have a, I've got a bunch of guys up here that... Um, I am forever in debt in two, in two, uh, but they really helped me through my PRP and um, anyway, so so thanks, thanks, thanks uh, from from Melvin Leroy from 626 November and uh, yeah, good deal. So you tell them, uh, tell them Brant said hello, tell them Brant said thanks and looking forward to uh, to the next event. So speaking of what's coming up next. On the on the channel itself, um, well, there's a few things here that that uh, I think are going to be pr pretty darn fun. So we're off Tuesday again. Normal uh, streaming days Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, but since we did this tonight, we're going to take Tuesday off. Uh, we're back Thursday, and we're back in the Carinata 152, uh, and it's episode five of Nowhere Fast, and we're going to be flying from uh, from a mountain strip in Idaho down to a mountain strip in no I'm sorry a mountain strip in Oregon to a mountain strip in Idaho it should be a lot of fun we're gonna end up at Fish Lake and uh, should be a bunch of fun it's one of those on the on the uh, as you look at the sectional it's one of those that's marked hazardous and so I thought you know what the heck if we're gonna fly somewhere uh, let's fly into a hazardous situation. Now, actually, what it was is uh, it, this is kind of a by request deal. And I had somebody that said, you know, where you ought to go is Fish Lake. And so I'm like, where's Fish Lake? And so I jumped on there and I found it. And it happened to be um, not too far away from where we left off in the last Bush League backcountry flying, which was 21 Whiskey Ranger Creek. I said creek for you there, downwind sim. And uh, we're heading to Sierra Niner 2, Fish Lake. And so, anyway, if you want to tune in, um, that's what's going on on Thursday. This coming up Thursday, the 23rd. And then Saturday, uh, there's some Mountain Mayhem going on. We'll be in the Fly J Sim 727, and we'll be checking out what's going on there. Um, and, yeah, that'll that'll finish the week out, and then we're going we're gonna to do some more stuff, uh, get some of those virtual, G, virtual USA Flying Club events on the uh, on the uh, schedule as well. Yep, the the 152 man, the the one filthy, and there is an event on Friday. Oh yeah, okay, good to know, good to know. There's lots of lots of good stuff going on in the bat sim world that sure makes it makes it a lot of fun. I said I said creek. It didn't even creek didn't even come out like my normal my normal uh, speak there. But anyway, 
That's going to do it for me tonight, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, I'll be checking for you on the TCAST. Everybody take care. God bless. Thank you.